So about a month ago, I told all of you that my tech startup Velocity was hiring software engineers, specifically game developers. Now I received hundreds of applications for this role and thank you to everyone who applied. I personally read through every single application and I'm still going through them today. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was pretty disappointed in the quality of applicant and just the amount of effort that went into the applications so much so that I felt the need to make this video and share with you all of the things that you should never do if you want to get hired by a tech company or even get an email response. These are really simple things. In some cases, they're single words that you just shouldn't include in your application. And I guarantee if you follow what I say in this video, you're going to have a much higher chance of actually getting an interview and getting some response based on your applications. Again, I don't want to single any of you out here, but I really think that I can help you because a lot of these applications, I'm talking about 90% of the applications I received, I was able to rule out in about five or 10 seconds of reading through them. And I really wanted to hire game developers. I wanted to hire as many of you as I could, but some of you just made it completely impossible for me to even consider you. So with that said, let's get into the video and I'll share with you what you should never do if you want to get hired by a tech company. But one thing you should do before that is listen to the sponsor of this video. Before we get started, I need to thank Sign Now for sponsoring this video. Sign Now lets you sign documents online, generate agreements, negotiate contracts, and accept payments. Best of all, Sign Now provides a powerful API that allows you to embed e signatures directly on your website. As a developer, you'll love Sign Now's detailed documentation and video tutorials, as well as the ability to test your apps for free and deploy them quickly. The Sign Now API is available through straightforward SDKs and allows you to complete entire document approval cycles from uploading documents to tracking signature progress. Sign Now e-signatures are legally binding and compliant with the highest standards of data privacy and security. Start your free API trial today and get 250 free signature invites by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again to Sign Now for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's start here with first impressions. Now, obviously, first impressions are very important, but they are especially important when you are trying to stand out from hundreds of other people and you have someone like me who doesn't want to spend 10 hours reading every single aspect of an application. So what you need to understand about, say, a manual review process here of applicants, which a lot of smaller companies like my company is doing, is that as the person reviewing your application, I am going to take any opportunity I can to move your application into the trash pile. The reason for that is I want less applications to review and I want to narrow down all of the possible applicants before I start reading into all of their applications more in depth. I'd rather really quickly scan through 300 applications, then look more in depth at say 20 or 30 of them before maybe reaching out and contacting a few people, then read every single application all the way through. So if you give me a reason why I can move your application into the trash pile, I'm going to do that. So what am I talking about when I say this? Well, a lot of you in the first sentence of, let's say, the long answer aspect of the application where I asked you something like, what's your experience or what are some games that you've built in the past? You started very first sentence, first impression saying, I have no experience. I am just beginning. I am a beginner. I don't know React. I don't know JavaScript. I don't know this. I'm not good at this. Or alternatively, you said something like, I want this job because, or I want to work with Tim, or I'm looking forward to working in a tech startup. Now, all of those things are not necessarily bad to say, but they're not the first thing that you should lead off with when you're trying to grab someone's attention. For me, for example, as soon as I read the word beginner, if that was in the first or second sentence of your application, I immediately put it into the trash because even though, yes, you may be someone that I could train, you may be someone that's going to be a great member of the team and really committed. Right now, as a tech startup, we're not looking for beginners. We're looking for people that are confident, people that know what they're doing and people that want to work and that I don't have to handhold when they're building different games. Now, this goes with another section of this video, which is knowing the role. But you don't want to start out with something negative or something that gives someone a reason to discredit you or to move you away from the possible applicant pile. You want to start with something along the lines of I have experience in React, in JavaScript. I'm confident that I would be a good um, person for this role. You want to do something Thing that gives some passion, that gives some energy, that shares experience, that gives me a reason to continue reading your application. And if you can make it unique, that's great. For example, all of the applications that started with something like, I'm an athlete myself as well as a programmer, I read the entire application. The reason for that is that the company that we're building has to do with athletics. So if you're someone who's an athlete, and you know how to program, I'm interested in you because even if I can't use you as a software engineer, maybe you have some other role in the company. 
So that's what I'm talking about here. You want to build a good first impression and you want to avoid putting anything in the first few lines of your application that allows someone to stop reading the application or kind of rule you out due to a red flag. All right, so moving on to section two here, which is projects. Now, once I've gone through kind of the basic text of your application, I'm going to start clicking on links. I'm going to look at your LinkedIn. I'm going to look at different projects and I want to get a sense of what you're able to do. So with projects here, so many of you submitted projects that were not relevant at all to the role. So you submitted stuff that was like a machine learning application or a Python app or something that just was not a game or didn't show the ability to work with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, et cetera, which was listed under the job requirements. So if you submitted any project, even if you submitted five projects and one of the projects you submitted was completely irrelevant to what we asked you to submit, I'm crossing you off because if that's one of the best projects you have and it's not even relevant to the role, it's another reason for me to get rid of you right now with the projects. A lot of you also submitted just super basic projects. You submitted stuff that anyone was able to do. You submitted a tic tac toe application. You submitted stuff that was just ripped from my tutorials or ripped from other people's tutorials, right? That was just almost the exact same code. Not that I went and looked at the code, but I just knew looking at the project how you came up with this. You didn't submit anything that was original at all, right? So if you did that again immediately, I've just crossed you off of the list here. Continuing, some people submitted like 20 projects. When you submit 20 projects, I'm not going to go look at all 20 projects. I'm going to look at maybe the first three. I'm going to click on a few random ones. So if coincidentally, the one that I clicked on looks really bad, that's too bad, right? It's unfortunate because now that's the impression that I've got of one of the three projects that I looked at. So what I would recommend for the projects here is make sure you're only submitting at most, I'd say like three projects on something like this that the projects are relevant to what the role actually is. So in this case, they're games or they show you have the ability to make games or they're a really polished portfolio website or react website and that all of the projects you submit look really good, are completely polished, are things that could be a production application. Also, all of the projects need to be click and run. They can't be things where I got to download the GitHub repository. I got to build the NPM packages. I got to host it on localhost. If you do something like that, I'm just not going to do that. That's too much effort for me to go through just to find out that, oh, this is from a tutorial or you're not even going to be the person that I end up interviewing. So you have to understand, again, from the interview perspective, I want it to be as easy for me as possible to look at your application and get rid of it. So don't make it easy for me to do that. Make it really hard. Give me a really polished project. Give me two really polished projects. Do a few really good games or show me that you have the ability to do that. As soon as I see that now, I'm excited and I want to look through the rest of your application and I'm kind of rooting for you at this point, right? After looking through hundreds of really, really bad applications. So that's what I have on projects. Again, the first impression of projects is super important. They need to look good. They need to be relevant. They can't be simple or trivial, and you don't need to submit 100 of them. If you submit 100, I'm not going to look through all of them. I'm only going to look through two or three anyways. So pick your two or three best ones and put those forward. All right, so next section here is on confidence slash self-doubt. Now, when I was reading these applications, one of the tones I was kind of looking for in your writing was confidence. The fact that you had the ability to do the job, you knew you could do the job. There wasn't any doubt that you were going to be able to fulfill the role, that you were going to be able to complete what was being asked of you. As soon as there was even a little hint that you weren't sure of yourself, that you didn't quite know if you were going to have the uh, the skills or the chops, for lack of a better word, to complete the job. Again, I had to throw your application out. Unfortunately, in this type of role, I can't be someone who's motivating you or training you constantly or hand holding you through what you need to do. This isn't something where we're trying to ramp someone up over a few months. This is a role where we need someone to come in and finish the job without really any help at all. Yes, I can give you, you know, a few minutes a day or I can, you know, walk through how to set up the repository or something. But beyond that, there can't be a kind of a reliance on someone else or this you know, doubt of ability. So just a note there, you want to be confident. Obviously, you don't want to overstep and become super arrogant in your application. But honestly, I would rather read an application from someone who knows what they're doing, who says, yes, I'm a professional. I make games. This is what I do. I have this much experience. I absolutely can complete this job as opposed to someone saying, well, I'm just getting started and, you know, I'm really motivated about learning. I want to join the company. I want to work with Tim. And they just this this kind of hint of self-doubt, right? They're not giving me this confidence, not giving me the fact that they know how to do this. They're saying, well, I think I can figure it out. And that's great for a lot of other types of roles, but I don't want someone who thinks I want someone who knows. All right. So next section here is to give more than you take. 
Now, this is in really any area of life. You are going to be attractive to someone if you offer them more than you are going to take from them. This is the case in relationships. This is the case in employment agreements. This is the case in any type of relationship that you have with a seller, with a company, how, however it may be. There's always some reciprocation, right? And people don't want to be in relationships where they're giving more than they are getting from the other person. And they feel there's not a accurate, say, value exchange or I guess a fair value exchange. So when you are trying to get a job, what you want to be doing is saying, this is what I'm going to give you. This is what I can give to the company. This is how I'm going to be an asset. This is how I can help you. You do not want to be saying this is what I want from the company. Some companies will ask you that and it's fine to answer and you can give some answers to that. But you want to be very careful how you phrase that, because the last thing I want to do is hire someone who just wants to work with me and just wants to talk to me all day or just wants to learn. That's all they want to do, right? They just want to get experience in a startup. They don't want to help us build games. They don't want to help take this company to another level, right? They're not saying those things. They're saying, this is what I want from the company, not this is what I'm going to give you and this is what I'm going to do for you. Even if you do want those things, the most likely way to get them is to first state what you're going to offer. And then later on, you sprinkle in a little bit of, okay, this is why I'm interested. This is why I want to work from you. It's a balance and you need to make sure you are giving more than you are taking. Otherwise, like in anything, people don't want to have a relationship with you, especially employee. So hopefully this is making a bit of sense. General rule in life, if you're trying to sell something to someone, give them more than you are asking from them. That's the only reason someone would buy a product from you. They think they're getting more than how much money they're giving you for the product, right? Or they think it's a fair value exchange. So with that said, let's move on to the next section. All right. So last section here, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, but you need to know the role when you are applying for a job. You have to craft your application around the specific role and understand that every company is looking for something slightly different and you want to make your application appear as though you are the ideal candidate for this specific role, not any software developer role, not any game developer role, this specific role. So that is why I was telling you before that a lot of the applications that I'm a beginner or I want to learn or I'll work for free, I didn't even read through because that's not what we're looking for for this role. I don't care if you work for free or if I have to pay you. I just need this to get done. So if you tell me I'm a beginner, but I'll work for free, I can't hire you. That's more of a burden on me than it is if I just pay someone to do the job, right? So you need to read through the role. You need to completely understand it. And you need to accept the fact that maybe you aren't the ideal candidate. And if that's the scenario, maybe you don't apply or you omit saying a few things that just make you seem a lot worse uh, than they do better. Right. So kind of this whole section here, just understand the role, do some research. You should have watched through the five minute video. You should have read through the application online. You should have tried to understand or put yourself in the shoes of me who's going to be hiring you and say, what does Tim want here? Does Tim want to train someone for six months to learn how to do this? Or does Tim want someone who can come in and complete the games? Hopefully the tone of my video would have you know, kind of set that and explain that to you. Maybe that's my fault for not clearly articulating that. But you want to put yourself in the shoes of the employer and say, would I hire me right now writing this application? Am I the ideal candidate based on what I've written here? And again, I want to be clear. I'm not saying lie. I'm not saying to be untruthful or deceitful. I'm just saying that there's a lot of times where you don't need to say something in the application and saying it is just going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to help. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope this was not hurtful. I hope you guys didn't take this personally. I genuinely want to help you here. I know a lot of you can be great software engineers. You can be great in the role that you're talking about and that you probably would have been good for this company. However, some of the things you said were just too big of a red flag for me to take the risk at even interviewing you and spend that time. And that's why I wanted to make this video so that hopefully in the future you're going to have more luck and you can take some of this to heart and really consider it the next time you're writing an application or you're applying for any type of company. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.